you like this episode, please subscribe, share with others, rate and review so we can continue to bring you great programming. This is The Thing About Cars, a podcast for car enthusiasts and the people who love them. Hello and welcome to another quick episode of The Thing About Cars. Misty was just talking about all the races that she's been watching, and so we're going to catch up on that in a second. It has been a while since the three of us have seen each other on screen and on mic, and around us we've got Misty, of course. How are you, Misty? I'm doing fa- fabulous. It was a race-filled weekend. I see that University of Georgia Bulldogs Cup. <laughs> Can't live without it. You all- and- Hmm? You want me to put on my Coca-Cola earrings, too? Oh, my God. You do not have Coca-Cola earrings. That's crazy. Ben, how are you, Ben? I'm pretty all right. How about you? I'm doing good. I'm doing all right. It's been a, it's been a very interesting start of the year um, for a number of different reasons. But how many? What were you watching, Misty? Well, this weekend was uh, Imola, oh. which with the recent uh, success of Ferrari should, should have proved to be um, loud. Uh, so, but it was also Formula Three and Formula Two in British GT and Porsche Super Cup. There was a Moto GP race, but it was on at the same time as the Formula One feature race. So, you know what happened there. Yep. And then on to top that off, it was it was off and on wet. Um, and there were quite a few drivers that drove straight to the scene of the accident. God bless them. Um, <laughs> Thankfully, the only damage was, uh, you know, a little bit of hurt pride and some body work. Um, although poor Fernando Alonso, you could just see right into his car. It was horrible. Oh, man. But I, I am pleased as punch to uh, report another Red Bull 1-2. Lando Norris came in third. Yeah. Giggling like a schoolgirl on the on the radio. <laughs> it was great. He yeah. was like, oh, we got another podium. Who would have thought it? I was like, oh. Misty, you, we need to get you like, I don't know, season passes to all these races or something. Fly around Europe and you can watch all okay. these things. Uh, you know, sign me up, uh, you know. I just dream uh, big. That's what I do. Uh, see, I mean, I, I'm, I'm down with it. Yeah. Well, I'm actually really super excited because I have a really good friend that lives in uh, South Africa. And they're talking about bringing the South African GP back. Oh. So I'm like, I need Africa, you know, on my, on my you know, list of continents. Yes. So, you know, and then I figure after that, I just need to go to Brazil and then I need to go to Australia and then I've hit all the <laughs> continents that have uh, motor racing and you, I'm good. You're reminding me I need to, um, I need to renew my passport. I've got it right here. Um, yeah, me too. Uh, I need to hurry up and get it back. It has expired. So, and my concealed weapons permit has expired for those of us who want to delve into the realm of gun control controversy. I just, uh, I just forgot. And so I have to go back to probate court and get my weapons permit redone. But and my no, mama I, had my grandpa's original uh, gun uh, concealed gun permit, and the yeah. actual title on it was pistol toting permit. That's hilarious. <laughs> Welcome to Raven County. I'm not lying. I'm I'm not even a two A gun nut, right? I'm not that person, but I just I like shooting. So so yeah, there we go. Anyway. And what those milk jugs ever do to you? Say what? I said, and and just what did those milk jugs ever do to you? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually paper. Yeah, I know. But pumpkins, pumpkins, milk jugs, paper, I just shoot it all. But pumpkins blow up. Like if you fill them with water and reseal them, and then you hit them with a nice high powered round, they go kablooey. It's kind of fun. So do milk jugs. Yeah. So anyway, we are not talking about cars. We need to talk about cars. <laughs> um, I have got a line on a couple guests. Remember Ricky Rockman? Oh, yeah. yes. So I was in Nashville, Tennessee recently, and I saw someone walking down the street with a Cat House Hollywood shirt. And I said, hey, do you listen to Ricky's podcast? And she says, no, but I used to work for Ricky. And so we had a, like a quick three minute conversation. And she her name is Abby K. Abby K is going to join us as a guest on the show. Her dad worked for NASCAR for 25 years. She's got an interesting car interest. So we're going to we're going to have them on the show. Um Another friend of a friend is a fleet manager for a company here in Atlanta. So I'm going to try to get him on so he can talk about fleet maintenance and stuff like that. That'd be cool. Um, Yeah. And uh, there's a few other things that I'm sort of idly chipping away on. I've been trying to reach out to more of the PR world to to very just 
assertively say that, hey, we are looking for guests, but we are looking for automotive like executives or celebrities who want to talk about cars and things like that. So, you know, speaking of Ricky, uh, I believe that uh, American Flat Track series that he told us about is coming up again next month. Oh, we should go. Yes, we should. And speaking of scheduling, the uh, Peachtree DeKalb Airport over here has their community air show coming up like soon, like really quick. And our friend Greg Barner is doing a small car show associated with that. Uh, awesome. So I, I, I don't know if we should try to get that on the calendar, but it's like a several hour affair. You need to get there at like eight in the morning and you don't leave until like six or seven at night. So it's a it's a lot of planes and a lot of cars. And yeah, yeah, that, that sounds really cool. Yeah. I'm just trying to go to the Asa TT, which is MotoGP at the end of June. Mm -hmm. um, it's a bit of a hike from here, but um, considering that the top level stadium seating is only for all three days is like under 200 euros. Wow. I'm like, okay, <laughs> sign me up. <laughs> all right. Yeah, so, it's ri yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, how do we, do, I mean, that's why I'm, I'm want us to, uh, and, and, you know, the listeners like what the hell's going on. And the listener doesn't realize that we are catching up here, right? We're, we're catching up on our various agendas. We have not had the wherewithal, or at least I haven't had the wherewithal to sit down and do any recording for several weeks. So this is the first time that we've seen each other in this context. So thank you to our yeah. listeners for, for, for bearing with us. And if you have any ideas to share with us during this time, uh, guests or, things we should do or ways to get Misty to be the global traveler that she wants to be, uh, you know, please, yeah. And to, to, to ride on the coattails of that, uh, yeah. when, uh, when y'all were saying something about, uh, every continent that racing is on. And my first thought the the word that popped into my head was Antarctica. <laughs> now, if we were a well-heeled media organization, like say road and track or top gear or something like that, you know, we could put together some kind of, you know, Antarctic racing stunt, you know, but since we are just a handful of regular folks with day jobs, yes, uh, that's going to have to remain a dream for now. But would it not be cool if we could somehow rope in some kind of big sponsorship to make this happen with us? That would be awesome. That would be more and, than awesome. Yeah. And since it's Antarctica and there's no actual track and, you know, everything will have to be brought, which means it's got to be kept as simple as possible. I think it should be a 24 hours of lemons event. <laughs> I was just going to suggest like RC cars. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you could put those in its suitcase. Oh, sure, sure. So there's here's the difference, right? <laughs> Misty's in visiting an RC car race in Antarctica. And in my mind, I'm seeing this cargo ship pull up to, and, and, and our huge ice cats roll out of the deck, <laughs> roll out of the cargo hold. And we do a 24 hour race across Antarctica with, with in ice cats or something. I don't know. I just, <laughs> well, yeah, since there is no what happened to that container ship of uh, yeah. very expensive. Yeah, no. Yeah. Well, being on an unapproved frozen surface, probably just like plow a big oval in it, get some old beat up four wheel drives uh, and just have at it. I love it. I really love it. That seems like the most rational thing to do. <laughs> so, hey, if, if anybody out there is listening who would like to sponsor this and make it happen with us, uh, it'll it'll be a fantastic circus. Yeah. Let us know. <laughs> That's right. And summer's coming up, which is the right time to go to Antarctica, right? So, uh, well, it's win it's winter coming up down there. Well, that's what I meant, right? So summer here means winter there. Yeah. And and maybe I have it backwards. Maybe we ought to go in like December and November. Probably. Um, yeah. Well, that gives some time to plan. Yes, it gives us time Same. to plan. But so, yes, yeah, sponsors, we need old beat up for we need to extend it a little bit. Like the challenge is here in the States, we have a certain amount of time and money to fix up our own four wheel drives and then uh, take them like, like ship them all down to Antarctica and do the 24 hour thing on an oval track down there. Yeah, we, we, do, we, we, we do have to set some ground rules so no sorry i'm, I'm yeah. my son's playing ps4 on on the big screen tv and he just like smacked a big honking huge spider with a hammer um <laughs> he's playing like skyrim or something i don't That's know so funny. but no but we, we have to set some ground rules like you cannot attach a flamethrower to your car to yeah. melt the ice under your opponent's car to win yeah right because you know like dave would do that we can talk about dave dave's not here he's uh decking his seal um oh no sorry wait no ceiling is decked sorry. ceiling is decked. Dave's, yep dave's not here dave's not so, here man 
So I have a couple of quotes from our friend Dave, since he's not with us and can't defend himself. And I have no idea why I wrote these things down. So help me out here. He says, the quote is, a feather, a pair of vice grip pliers, 2,000 white Legos, and a box of Duncan Hines Devil, Devil's Food Cake. Of course, only use whole milk and alkaline batteries, and no, Mo Rocca lied. <laughs> what the heck did I write that down for? And why did Dave say that? Okay, I don't that's know, for but... the second one, probably best not to ask. <laughs> All right, so we do some trivia real quick because we have a, an abundance yeah. of that. All right, um, and this is the talking point, so we'll go straight to the to battery. Did we do what's the GV, <clears throat> GEVECO GVCO battery service? I don't think so. I don't think so. What is G? And it's one word. It's spelled capital G, lowercase e, capital V, lowercase e, capital C, lowercase o. GEVECO GVCO or whatever. Um. What is that? What is that battery service? A, is it A, a new S, God, geez, Tim, what'd you do to me? A new Spader funded company that plans to use energy stored in electric cars, propulsion batteries to mine Bitcoin wherever the vehicles are parked for more than 15 minutes? Is it B, a network of battery chargers to be built around New England and Ontario capable of charging most electric vehicles in less than 15 minutes with minimal shortening of the battery's lifespan? Is it C, electric trucks sold by a subsidiary of General Electric quickly exchange quickly exchange their depleted batteries for freshly charged ones? This battery exchange service was operational from 1910 to 1924. Or was it D, a startup company that promises it will be able to restore electric on hybrid vehicles, battery packs, when they get close to the end of their life cycles? Which one of those is it? <laughs> Are we, we, we're not saving this for the end? No, let's do it now because I've got another one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, B, C, and D all sound so plausible, and I couldn't even keep up with all the details in A. Yep. <laughs> so I'm going to go with A because it just sounded ridiculous. <laughs> it's the Bitcoin mining car. Yes, exactly. Okay. Misty, what do you think? I'm, I'm, I'm going with C. C. C is actually correct. It was a, a subsidiary of GE, operational from 1910 to 24. Uh, electric trucks sold by that subsidiary... Um, would exchange their depleted batteries for freshly charged ones right there on the spot. So the uh, second question I have for us today, vegan leather was an interior upholstery option on which of these vehicles? A, a 1971 to 73 Ford Mustang. B, a 2002 Chevrolet Silverado 1500 truck. C, the Bluebird, uh, sorry, the 2010 Bluebird All-American school bus. Uh, D, all of the above. Now, is this vegan leather as a, is that what, what they called it or just what it is? Uh, I don't know. What's the difference? <laughs> vegan uh, leather is like non-leather Because leather. otherwise it's just like Naga hide. Naga hide, yes. Naga hide, <laughs> leather, right. Yeah, <laughs> a, a lowercase, the- yeah, lowercase or uppercase, uh, you know, letters on that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Any guesses? A school bus. You think it was a school bus, Ben? Uh, well, if it's not a, if it's not a trademark, all the above, it is all the above actually. And, uh, and that's just, I, I mean, vegan leather seems like such a contradiction in terms, right. But, uh, but it is what it is. And I'm just surprised that they had it back on the 70 and the oh, 73 hours on that Mustang vegan. Leather. Well, I mean, so. vinyl upholstery in cars goes back farther oh, than that, you know? Yeah. So and, yeah, I guess in this sense, vegan leather simply means fake leather. Yeah. It just means genuine Naga had all them poor little Nagas. Right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, one more, and then I have a talking point for us. Um, this is a true or false answer, a true or false question, rather. LED light bulbs are polarity dependent. It matters which terminals are connected to positive and negative, true or false. That is true. Ben knows this one, of course. Yeah. Misty. Yeah. Yep. Well, then I'll just say, I don't, I don't know, because I don't, you know, I don't change the light bulbs in my house. You never put in LEDs in your, in your, you never swapped out any of your Miatas? Bulbs no, for LEDs? Okay. That's why I have a dealership. Well, but you still wouldn't have to know the polarity even with those because of the way automotive bulbs are made. Well, actually, I had a Mazda that I changed out a lot of the bulbs behind the dashboard and in the console with LEDs. And if you uh, if you put them in the wrong way, they would not work. Oh, well, yeah, I can think of one, you know, a couple of designs that would be exception to that. But most of the ones that have, uh, you know, a single-ended base, most of them, I say, Mm-hmm. are polarity specific but i can think of some like those little those little glass ones that don't have a a metal base surrounding the glass just have two little wires folded over the end exactly yeah, you, 
Right, right. And variations on that theme, right? There's something called a T5 bulb, which is essentially, you know, the two wires are arranged around a base and there's no way to make that a directional fit. So, right. So it's stuff like that. So, yeah. So no, they, I, I, I just figure that, that, that somebody else can do all the light bulb changing, considering <laughs> I do the, 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 the knitting and the crocheting and the sewing and the weaving and the spinning and the wallpaper hanging and the painting and the laundry and, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I can still gap a spark plug though but you've got yeah. the mx5 right so i know but that's yeah. why i have a dealer right you know um, i mean it, it's not like my antique sewing machines you know there's reasons i buy antique sewing machines if they don't work i just hit them with a hammer and then they yep. work so yeah. here's what tim wrote he says true it is like other diodes a light emitting diode needs current to flow in one direction only some led bulbs have additional circuitry to reverse that current if necessary uh, but especially with automotive LED bulbs, it's a good idea to test the bulb to make sure it works uh, with the right uh, directional polarity um, if, if the LED does not light up. You literally have to put it in, power it up, and if it doesn't work, pick it out, turn it around, and try it, and that does the trick. So good stuff from Tim, as always. Um, our talking point is from our friend Ben Wood. Ben says... As it pertains to your conversation on gasoline from the last podcast, Jim Ben is a good friend of ours. He listens to all of our stuff and manages not to, you know, delete us. Um, <laughs> ben says, as it pertains to your conversation on gasoline from the last podcast, I learned something a while ago that one reason you shouldn't buy cheap gas, in quotes, that companies are, are like from companies that are not main brand like BJ's and whatever, is that they get their gas supplied by trucks who have excess gasoline in their tanks after making their main deliveries. Therefore, what you are getting in your tank is a potpourri of all the different gas brands. So the additive package is going to be vastly different and completely unreliable. I have never heard this before. I have heard many other things about gas, about the additive package, that gas is all the same except for like, uh, you know, various, various additive packages from different companies. But, but I mean, I have never heard the idea that gas left over in the actual tanker truck is uh, a mishmash of what you get at the, uh, at the cheaper gas stations. Have you ever heard anything like this, Misty? I haven't heard anything about anything like that. Yeah. I mean, that sounds kind of like, I don't know what that sounds like. Sounds weird. It sounds weird. Ben? It sounds to me like the kind of thing that uh, either could be completely true or the result of somebody overthinking something right. uh, and and reacting and overreacting to overthinking it. Now, even if it is true, uh, API standards being what they are, uh, it probably, well, I know it won't hurt anything and average consumer will not notice it by the seat of their pants. Right. That's the thing. I mean, the average consumer will never know the difference as long as they're not trying to do high performance driving of any kind, just put the gas in your car and go. Yeah. There, I mean, years ago, there was a the whole thing about, uh, you know, using a, a pump that has one hose for three different grades. Now, if you buy premium, you're getting something like a pint of regular in the hose from the last guy. And everybody was freaking out about that, but you know, nobody could tell the difference driving down the road. Nobody. So I'm not, I'm not, really sure we're addressing ben's point ben wood's point but uh right uh, yeah well we kind of we kind of are because even if things are mixing in somewhat there uh well one if you know how much would be left in the truck and two it, it wouldn't be causing anybody a problem no and in, in fact i remember hearing an old episode of car talk with the the the, the tappet brothers right click and clack and um there was this statement, this rumor that you could you could dissolve a quart of automatic transmission fluid into your gas tank, and it would help keep your engine in better shape for longer, and whether or not this statement was true. And what the Magliani brothers said, I hope I'm getting their name right, because if I'm not, he's going to come down here and kick my butt. But uh, well, then we could have him on the show at least. And we should at least have him on the show. <laughs> Let's, we should all slaughter his name. Yes. Um, so, Baliazzi, by the way. Bal thank you. That's it. <laughs> Damn it. Oh. All right. So, yes, that guy. Um, <laughs> he, uh, he said that you could, you know, he said you could do that. There's no harm in actually taking a quart of ATF fluid and, and dissolving it into, you know, 12 to 16 gallons of gas, uh, saying that you could do that with any kind of lubricant and that it's still, your engine probably wouldn't even know the difference, right? So that, so there's a little bit now of ATF fluid coming in from the top end of the engine, whether it's through a carburetor or for an injector. So there might be a little bit of a lubricative element uh, from, the, from, you know, the top end distribution of that fluid, but otherwise, 
a quart of ATF fluid mixed in with all that gas is not a big deal at all. Right. As long as it is actually mixed. As long as it is actually mixed. That's correct. Right. And, and, and then the second thing they said, and this kind of has something to do with Ben Wood's question, is, is that it's not certain if that ATF fluid actually helps maintain your engine at all. But it's more likely that a person who's caring enough there about their car to think about that is, is probably taking good enough care of their car to begin with that the ATF is just sort of placebo effect, right? Yeah. And yeah, so. Or it could have just been some, you know, fuel delivery trucker, you know, with a really warped sense of humor. <laughs> right. <laughs> Plus, too, if these trucks aren't uh, aren't delivering their full load, somewhere along the line, somebody's getting ripped off. And yeah. with it, it, it as slim as the margins are in most you know businesses, uh, you know that <clears throat> that's not going to go on for too long. Right. Being the closely controlled and monitored commodity that it is. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. You know, and 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 the, you know, it comes out of the trailers by gravity. You know, the, the outlets on the bottom and the hose goes down to the ground. So. Yep. Exactly. All right. Good stuff. What else is on our agenda for today? Uh, how's how's Ben's new to him car doing? Oh yeah, it is. It is doing great. Uh, the one interesting thing was that the dealer put a uh, uh, you know temporary you know paper plate on it, which actually is a sticker now. They it's a sticker that they stuck over the plastic plate that said certified pre owned. Uh, but the uh, the temporary plate expired on the 11th of April, and the permanent plate did not arrive until at least a good solid week after that. I was beginning to wonder for a while, and I called them, and they said, oh, well, according to our check, your your plate is in the mail. We can even tell you what number is going to be on it. <laughs> so I wasn't too worried about it, but uh, it seemed a little funny. But yeah, it's doing great. Uh, we took it on the longest trip yet over to Alabama to see my mom last weekend, and uh, it was a good, comfy, mile-eating machine, so I think it's going to do really well for some future road trips, and we got one to Springfield, Missouri planned for June already, so I'm looking forward to taking it on that trip. Have you taken it off any sweet jumps yet? Not yet. <laughs> You know, I mean, we got plenty of hills around here, but most of them have trees all over them. Yeah, so, that's uh, the thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I and I don't really want to build, you know, big old ramps. So, because what am I going to do with it afterward? Right. Oh, don't worry. Ferrari was jumping all the <laughs> curbs at Imola this weekend. Oh. You know, and it, it was literally like. Whee! Of course, I could call up a bunch of my motorcycle people and ask them who wants to, uh, you know, be the the biggest evil can evil badass on it. <laughs> Get a little competition <laughs> thing going there. <laughs> so Misty, does that mean all these Ferraris didn't finish? Um, well, uh, Char Charles, Charles yeah. Leclerc, um, I started second, finished P4, uh, cause he got a little, uh, excited and, uh, um, did, uh, Benalla, you know, uh, spun around. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, Carlos Sainz didn't even make it to like the third turn in the first lap because he got uh whoa he 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 got honey badgered by Danny Rick. <laughs> he did. I don't even um, know what that means, but the term honey badger just makes me laugh. Well, yeah, well, yeah, they, 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 Dan, Danny Rick's little thing is you know honey badger. Besides drinking champagne out of his disgusting uh, racing shoes when he wins a race. Yeah, or like finishes on the podium. Thank God he doesn't do that anymore. Um, finish on the podium. I mean, not drink out of his shoe. Not drink out of his shoe. Yeah. Hey, I'm yeah, never gonna. No. I'm not gonna kink shame the man. All right, he's got to do. Right. Gotta do. <laughs> not, not to not to interject too big a tangent here, but yeah. that suddenly gave me a thought. What, what happens when somebody who is lactose intolerant wins in, wins the Indy 500? Ooh. Oh. Badness, I, bad things happen. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, I think you're right. I think, no, I think you're right. That, that would be bad. But Sooner yeah. or later, it's bound to happen. <laughs> they give him a bunch of lactate. Yeah. Oh. So they, uh, so that was, uh, so yeah, Ferrari did not finish on the podium. The Tifosi was um, very quiet, very, very quiet. Um, However, you know, I'm still going to say it, the Italian national anthem, it is a bop, you know, and if you weren't awake at the beginning of the race when their brass band played it, by God, mm. when they finished, you were awake. Because <laughs> <laughs> it is definitely, uh, you know, it is, it is definitely, um, it is not a quiet song. <laughs> it is not a quiet song. I'm just saying. And then they had the jets flying over with yeah. the 
you know, with the properly colored smoke. And, uh, and they, they finally brought the cool down room back, which had some um, post-race commentary from Max and uh, Checo and uh, uh, Lando, uh, for which uh, the Sky commentators apologized for the fruity language. Fruity language. Oh, goodness. <laughs> well, I, I, I think Max probably dropped an F-bomb because he, he doesn't care. Right. <laughs> he doesn't care. So, but so, no, it was, uh, you know, it, it was a good race. It was, uh, you know, it was pretty, actually pretty exciting. Although I have to say the midfield was um, at times more exciting. Um, our favorite driver to strongly dislike, Lewis Hamilton, finished uh, P14. Mercedes uh, bombed their car. You know, this this year was uh, a new car, new regs, and uh, new 18, 18 inch wheels. They even brought back uh, hubcaps. Oh. Uh, and <laughs> um, Mercedes, although I don't know if you can say Mercedes bombed the car or not, because George Russell, uh, Lewis Hamilton's new teammate, finished P5. So, uh, yeah, it was uh, quite a day if you were a, a Max Verstappen fan, because I think Max slapped Lewis twice at least. Oh my God. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was, and the, the thing was, I was, well, I was watching Sky and they have Nico Rosberg, who's Lewis, Hamil Lewis Hamilton's former teammate. I am 99% sure that when he was off mic, he was giggling like a 13 year old girl because <laughs> he was roasting Lewis very, very subtly, but he was roasting him left and right. Hmm. And I was like, yeah, you're, you're, you are definitely going off the mic and going. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But yeah, it was pretty funny. It was pretty funny. So, so. <clears throat> Ben, you were talking about road trips. I took my Honda Accord, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry about that, up to Nashville, a four hour drive up from where we live and a four hour drive back. Um, and normally when I tool around town in that thing, I put regular gas in it for my inner city driving and I get roughly 23 miles to the gallon, which sucks. Mm. This time I put super unleaded gas in it and drove a reasonable speed up to Nashville and back and got 29 miles to the gallon. Yeah. And, uh, and of course all of that is highway driving, right? Like very little of it is inner city driving at all. So is, right. is the difference the gas or the highway? Uh, mostly just the highway driving. Yeah. So if I put regular gas in it and drove to Nashville and back, I would still get 29 miles to the gallon. Yeah, pretty close. You, you'd have to probably do it several times to know whether or not the difference was a real thing or incidental. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've heard anecdotal things about higher grade fuels being a little more efficient, you know, to burn. Um, but the, the, the physical driving is what's making the vast majority of the difference. And that's what I'm wondering, because I did the math and it's like a, a 20 to 30% increase. Uh, no, it's like a 20% increase in the price of the gasoline per gallon led to a, like a 30% increase in the mileage overall. I, I can't remember the exact numbers. I'm, I'm misquoting something, but it was like disproportionate, right? Like I, I actually made more money saving mileage or increasing the mileage per gallon than I did spending the money on the like, more expensive gas. I wonder so, too uh, whether going up or coming down gave you better return. Uh, oh well, I did, you know, there and back on one tank. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, and I also don't know the altitude of Nashville, but I know that to get there, you go through a couple of high places. But you know, like when I go over to Alabama to see my ma, we uh, it's about uh, oh how far is it? A hundred something miles each way. It's about a two and a half to three hour each way drive, depending on traffic and such. And I definitely get better mileage going there than coming back, mm -hmm. you know, because Birmingham where she lives is, you know, you know, six, 700 feet above sea level, whereas right. Atlanta is about a thousand. So yeah, it's, you don't notice that much of an uphill downhill thing, but it's there. It's yeah, it's there. So I'm going to, I'm going to run this experiment. I've got, I've still got super unleaded in the tank. I'm going to do it again for one more tank full just to see what it does for normal city driving. Yeah. Mickey. And you, I was going to say Mickey. This is where you're going to hate me because yeah. like when I turn my car off, it gives me like a number per yeah. hundred kilometers. Well, <laughs> the other day, cause I, I, I go into work like two, three days a week. It's about 40 kilometers one way. Cause I work down in Rotterdam. Um, so it's, it's mostly highway. And the other day I got in, pulled in the parking garage and worked at flash to 5.4 mm. and I just converted it 
I got 43 miles a gallon. Whoa, nice. man. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. But the thing with trying to do, you know, if, if you're trying to compute it on your own, like you probably have to with the Accord, uh, yep. the thing is, uh, it's really tough to establish a good control, which means, you know, if you, right. if you, if you use this car exclusively for the same route every day, like say a commute to an office right. and didn't throw in too many variables on that route and you did 10 tankfuls of regular and 10 tankfuls of premium, then you might start to see a bit of a, you know, aggregating trend. Right. But short of that, I, I wouldn't really, really put too much weight on the results. Right. So <laughs> we, um, uh, I, I'm counting my control as just an average week of driving in Atlanta. Right. right? Just yeah. yeah. As, as long as there's no road trip, then that to me sort of counts as average. So, so I always, I mean, I know what my baseline average is. I always get roughly 23 miles to the gallon when I'm in city. So yeah. we're, we're just going to do a couple of tankfuls of super and see if that number changes for an average week in Atlanta. Yeah. So. Okay. Close it, enough. It, it's yeah. just want to make you cry again. Cause right now my car is averaging 6.3 which is 37 miles a gallon. God, my wife's car is, which is a beat up old herself from 1992. Uh, of course, you know, teeny tiny engine and her, his, she, her car gets better mileage than mine, even though it's ancient. Of course, it's a teeny tiny car with a teeny tiny right. engine. So well, my then, old Mazda, yeah, my old Mazda would get 40 on the highway. See 40. That just kills me. Yeah. This, this is a Honda engine. It's a four cylinder Honda engine. What, you know, what kind of mileage you get in the new Mazda? Uh, I don't have direct experience yet, but, uh, it's quoted at something like, I want to say about 25 city and like 33, 34 highway. Mm -hmm. Of course, Mazda is also notorious for uh, under promising and over delivering on MPG. So yeah, right. right. Even then, it, even if it over delivers, it won't be by more than, you know, one or two miles per sure. gallon, probably, sure. but, uh, it, it's not bad for what it is. I think. All right. Well, yeah, it'll never match that little three, but it's a bigger, heavier car, but it uses a lot of the same technology that the three use. Well, in a future episode of the Think About Cars, I will hopefully have some numbers to report on yeah. super versus regular gas. But uh, right. And a quick reminder to our listeners, and thank you for joining us for this. We're going to call this one a bonus episode since we didn't follow standard <laughs> format or anything. Um, but thank you for joining us for, our, for our, our reconnecting with the microphone and with each other. If you have suggestions for future shows or can put us in touch with guests that we would uh, have some fun with on the show, please drop us a line via the website or via our Facebook page. Just find us at The Thing About Cars. And as always, thank you for being here. Anything else that I'm forgetting, you guys, before we take off? Yeah, probably I can't not. Think of yeah. yeah, no. Tip, tip your waitress. We'll be here all week. Tip your waitress. We'll be here all week. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Yeah. Be safe out there. We'll see you guys in the next episode in about a week. Take care, everybody. See ya. Laters. Thank you for listening. This has been The Thing About Cars. We'll see you on the road.